Okay, thank you everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Jamri Chaney and I work at the Fleet Town. We mainly focus on power management system for years. And earlier this year, we found the uh, customer that was in the rest support on the Intel platform. Uh, and Chaney fixed the AD. Rui, uh, one, one comment. Your, mm -hmm. your, your, your audio is chopping, so maybe you could uh, turn the camera off and then. Um, okay. So it may help. Right? Let's try this way. Okay. Is it better now? Slightly, so. Let me try it. Uh, earlier this year, we found a bug. So, can you hear this clearly? Yeah, it's, it's better than before, yeah. Okay. So, we found a bug you fix the UX part on the internet platform. And the change we fixed it in part of 18. However, we read in this piece of code. We think there are more places that would further investigation and we'd like to take this chance to share the problem with from your recent research. Okay, the first uh, slide is about background. Let's read this chart from left to right. So first, as we know, the load balancer balance the work, the load on different CPUs to optimize the overall throughput of the system. And when load balance is triggered on a CPU, we need to find out the busiest scan group and then the busiest CPU so that we know which run queue we should pull the work from. At the same time, we need to classify the type of the scan groups. For example, we need to know if a group is overloaded or not or if it has spare capacity, etc. The YouTube average and the load average is from the CPU CFS run queue are used as import input for this purpose. And then this YouTube average and the load average are calculated by the task size in a running delta time. Then here comes the problem. How to describe the task size? Before frequency inverse was introduced, we use clock task, which align to the running delta time. However, this has a problem. As described in the dotted box, clock task can be bigger if the task is running with a slower CPU frequency, and vice versa. For example, the same work can be finished in two seconds when CPU is running at one gigahertz, but only one second if CPU is running at two gigahertz. That says, the task size is a variant based on the running frequency. And the frequency inverse is introduced to solve this problem. First of all, a scaling factor named the arc freak scale is introduced. It is called portion of the current running frequency and the maximum frequency. With this scaling factor, we can get the, clock, uh, get the uh, scale task size from clock task and it is clock count, which is invariant to frequency changes. In this talk, we're seeing frequency inverse gaps and mainly in problems related to the three red boxes in the right bottom corner. Go to next slide. Okay, we already, we already know that arc freak scale is a quotient of free curve and freak max. Free curve, ARM and x86 has their own implementation. I don't find any uh, problem during our investigation, so I will not go to details about this. On contrast, for freak max, we found that this uh, it can be run in many situations. This includes the cases where CPU is in turbo or it's throttle on hybrid CPUs and also CPU frequency range changes. As uh, all the experiments are done on the platform, I will illustrate these issues based on the frequency implementation of Intel. But still, some of the problems
problem may be x86 or it has specific, well, some of them should be generic issues. So let's go to details. Okay. This is the simplest and the most straightforward way to trigger focus freak max. First, we choose two CPUs in two different cores so that they can run at different frequency. And they are CPU 0 and CPU 2 in this case. And then we run due to cycle workload to keep CPU 0 and CPU 2 always 80% busy all the time. Finally, we limit the CPU 2 frequency via system uh, interface at the 10th second. The left graph shows the, the running frequency. CPU 0, as shown by the blue line, is always running at the max turbo frequency. CPU 2, as shown by the orange line, its frequency drops at, uh, at 10 seconds because it's limited with, uh, from CSFS. And the green line is the frequency max the kernel uses. On Intel platform, the fourth entry of the turbo ratio limit MSR uh, you recall the full call turbo frequency is used as freak max. This is a static value as long as turbo is enabled. So the problem is that when the CPU frequency range is ch changes at 10 seconds, the freak max is not updated. As a result, the graph on the, on the right shows that the CPU 2 U2 average drops to drops because kernel starts the task is running at around one third of the CPU's maximum frequency. Then from the load uh, balance of the okay. okay, so so is, is the is the freak max is the CFS limit or is it a different it's a kernel it's a kernel uh, kernel uh, uh, thing we use. It's a, basically it's concept but uh, uh, we we use uh, Back uh, top of break ratio, uh, something to represent, to represent this. And it is static. Yep. Okay. So as we can see the. Uh, the... Uh, yeah, 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 there are questions in the, in the room. Okay, yeah. I'm a bit surprised because normally the frequency invariance make that your the utilization of your test should remain the same as long as the you are not overloading the CPU. So even if for some point, uh, if at some point you can't reach the max frequency, your utilization should not change. Otherwise, it means that it's not invariant. Oh yeah. So the the, the problem is that it is supposed to be invariant, but it, in fact it is that, that uh, at least what we have on ARM, even if you cap the frequency of the your CPU, the, mm -hmm. so the, the frequency will never go above this CFS, but your utilization average will remain the same. As long as you are not overloading, I mean, typically, if you want to run 90% of the max frequency and you cap to half frequency, I mean, at some point you will be over because you will always run, so you can't make any estimation anymore. But otherwise, you should not see that from the beginning. Okay, you mean that if uh, I just uh, I don't use due to set workload, but I use the uh, fixed size workload, the problem will will come. Okay, but maybe, you... yeah, maybe your problem is that you are running a eighty percent busy CPU, and then you divide it by four the frequency, which means that. Mm -hmm. And I can't yeah. even understand why you go down to you. You should go back, go up to the max value. Actually, um, one other quick comment is that so let this is like a calm. Okay, to take a step. My first point is that I think the behavior is correct because one other mm -hmm. case where somebody might uh, limit the max frequency from CFS would be for thermal. Sometimes usually space will come and limit the max frequency for thermal. In those cases, we do want the utilization to be calculated the way it is today, because when you later remove the limit, you want mm -hmm. the frequency to go back up immediately, because that's because your utilization would have taken up all of the max frequencies capacity if you hadn't throttled it. There is a question from Yuvan. No, okay, but in this case, so you you think that this is oh. a correct behavior, right? Um, and yeah, you should. Yeah. 
Um, so sorry for interrupting. Yep. Can anyone look at the matrix? Uh, conversation and see, and you know, see if there are oh, any yeah. questions in there, and uh, and maybe repeat them. And uh, so, Giovanni, do you, are you on the call? Yeah, he. I see. He raised the hand. Giovanni, can you you can ask a question if you. Of course, Giovanni said on the chat, Frank Max is set at boot at a constant value, the one for the four core turbo. It was meant as an heuristic. So it can't work on hybrid CPU, Aldo Lake. I also, yeah, so the, there is a mechanism to, to update it when, the, when we turn turbo yeah. on and off, but that's the only one. Yeah, so, you yeah. know. That explain why your frac max is below the highest frequency CPU you can reach. Yep. But that doesn't explain why you you see that your utilization is drop down to 250. This should not, should not happen. Yeah, At I least it's agree. not happening on a on ARM. Oh, well, so this, uh, this is all x86 specific. No, yeah, that's right. right. Yeah, right that's, now. Uh, so okay. But this, uh, this, my understanding is, uh, so I'd, I'd like to, uh, to say that this is a due to sec workload. So the task size actually changes. We just keep the CPU busy all the time, no matter what the frequency is. Oh, OK. Uh, OK, yeah. OK. So you're always using 80% of the current capacity. Yeah, yeah. The utilization, the utilization is 80%. So in this case, that's normal. Because you are using uh, eighty percent of uh, a quarter yeah. of the Mac, yeah. yeah. So that's right. why you're there. Yeah. So the, the, the your IT leverage is not underestimated in this case. Correct. Yeah, the other words is working exactly as it's supposed to work. Yeah. So, so the, yeah, the example is not the best yeah. one, probably. But the problem is that the problem is that. What uh, what would this bring to the load balancer? From the load balancer of the view, CPU two has is has the uh, has the under a uh, lower utilization uh, U2 average compared with CPU zero. And the CPU zero, it, if I put a load higher, the CPU zero can be overloaded, but CPU two can be has capacity. Uh, it can be classified yes. as has capacity. But, so this but is, if you if you look on CPU zero, the task is doing four times more things than on CPU two. Though. So that normal that util average is four times or two times mm -hmm. or three times, I don't know. So I, I think that, correct. I think that instead of discussing this example, because yeah. we only have, you know, like 10 minutes more for this topic, let's just go okay. and uh, talk about the problem. And then, you know, we'll see how this related to the example or not. Uh, because, yeah, we are spending too much time here. Okay. Okay, let's, uh, let's go to uh, the slide first. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, so let's, uh, on, on, on the, uh, let's continue this one. So on Intel platforms, the, uh, the problem is can be worse because we, uh, we, don't, uh, we don't use CBPC and we use this static value and the, the CPU actual uh, frequency reading can be changed uh, uh, in hardware. For example, we have the config TDP feature on client and also we have the Intel Speed Slack feature on server. Most of this feature can result in the global frequency and the base frequency change, and the way we never update it. Okay, yeah, okay. okay. So, mm -hmm. uh, so do you have more slides, or is it just this? No, uh, uh, I have, yes, I have uh, Oh, yeah, okay. No. Mm -hmm. no. All right. 
Okay, so next uh, slide. Let's check the turbo and throttle case. This is a big problem in my opinion. So when frequency is in turbo range or CPU throttled, OS can only request the frequency without knowing if the frequency can be granted to CPU or not. And this is subject to challenges. A, frequency max is unknown. And B, it varies over time. So if the problem in the previous slide is that the kernel does not update the frequency max we needed, this problem is that the kernel does not, does not know what value the frequency max should be updated to. And uh, uh, when the when the frequency max we use in kernel varies from the actual max frequency, problem comes. To illustrate this problem, we make CPU zero and CPU two busy all time and put a load on the other CPU starting from the same second. So let's uh, let's, let's check the graph on the left. Uh, we can see that uh, the CPUs are running at max turbo frequency in the beginning, and then drop to four core turbo frequency, and then drop to, to, uh, uh, to uh, and then throttle the later uh, due to the TDP limit. And uh, oh, by, by the way, CPU zero and CPU two are always running at the same frequency. So the blue line is totally overridden by the orange line. That's why you cannot see the blue blue line is the is the right is the uh, right graph. Uh, the left graph, graph. And, and uh, we, we can see from graph that uh, during the experiment, the frequency the kernel uses can either be lower than the actual frequency or be higher than the uh, actual uh, frequency. So what could this bring? If the, if the frequency max is lower than the active max frequency, the, the arc, uh, free, uh, arc frequency scale is clamped. And we may lose task size accuracy. So, uh, simple example, say there are two tasks. Task A takes uh, running at 4 gigahertz and it runs for 1 millisecond. Task B running at 5 gigahertz and also runs for 1 millisecond. Apparently, B is bigger, right? But if kernel use 3 gigahertz as frequency max, then the scale task size for both of these two tasks are 1 millisecond running at 3 gigahertz. No difference. Right? So, uh, I, I have, uh, actually, I have a few slides to illustrate this, but I can talk it uh, later only if we have time. So, uh, if kernel sets the frequency max too low, the real task can run at frequency higher than the frequency max, and the task accuracy is lost. But if kernel sets the frequency max too high compared with the active max frequency, then the CPU can never reach the high frequency. And again, the utility will be underestimated. That's the, uh, the previous one. No, but yeah, that is so. For, for the first part, yeah, I agree uh -huh. that if you go above the max frequency, you will not see the difference. But I think Giovanni said it was a kind of a heuristic that have been chosen because you're not always reach the max. For the yeah. other part, may I, may I yeah. speak? May I? Yeah. Can you can you hear me? Okay, I have uh, yeah, we can hear. fixed my mic. Uh, hel hello, Rui. This is Giovanni Gertovic from SUSE. Uh, so you are correctly saying that uh, uh, the value frac max is not adequate in all uh, situations. But as you uh, as you know, because you wrote in the abstract of your talk, you are aware that this value is set statically at boot mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. essentially a guess because uh, x86 has uh, optimistic um, uh, optimistic uh, uh, optimizations um, and uh, it's hard to know what the actual max frequency is at any given time because you may or may not have turbo etc so uh, this the presentation that you are giving is correct. Uh, frac max is uh, possibly inadequate, even more so on hybrid CPUs. So I wonder uh, what is your proposal to get rid of this heuristic, which in my opinion was uh, very crude but necessary. What what is your uh, uh, proposal? The problem is clear, in my opinion. It's a it's a it's a static value at boot, so there is not much to talk about that. I think. Please. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, 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 I, you are, you are see my proposal, right? Yeah. So Giovanni was asking what 
you know what 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 you propose about yeah you know, dealing... I, I i i first i want to illustrate uh, my present was to illustrate these issues at the beginning and uh, we have some proposals but for some problems by asking for uh, comments and suggestions and i have a slide for that yeah, maybe we we can measure it. Is this do you want a proposal from me, or do you have one? <laughs> oh, if you you if you have one, that's 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 great. Yes, I'd like to get it. Okay, so um, if you want to know what the maximum frequency is, the only way you can really know is that you uh, in the case of the CPU where you've it's on auto, right? It's in turbo mode or it's in HWP mode. We're not specific. We're not asking for the frequency. We're throwing work at it. And if if we run out of idle time, if we're hundred percent utilized, that is exactly what the maximum frequency is at that instant. So at any given time, when we have no idle time, we know in Linux we can measure the frequency. We could change this a hundred times a second if we wanted to. And have an, a very accurate of the accurate picture of the recent history of what Max Freak really is. That's really the only way to know. So, on the max frequency being the turbo or the four core running, I agree that maybe it's this should be improved. On the fact that when the user space cap the max the the max running frequency, this is already handled, and this for me the result is correct because you are using only a quarter of the available capacity. Now, the user space kept that, and we have what we call, maybe the name is not correct, we have a thermal feedback, because usually it's the thermal things. We say, right now, uh, um, your max compute capacity is 1K, but user space, or so for thermal consideration, we have kept that to half or a quarter, which means that if your utilization is a quarter, because the other part is removed by the thermal, you are running at max capacity, current capacity, but not the max of the system if you don't take into account the user space. Sure, sure. Yeah, that the, the user space cap is different than when the hardware does the, does the limit, right? I agree. Also saying max frequency can change, doesn't even make any sense. Max frequency is the max frequency you can reach at any point in time. I know what you're talking about, the turbo, I completely get it's opportunistically boosted. In my opinion, the maximum possible boosted value should be the max frequency. But and you, then- You may never reach it. What? You may never reach it. Yeah, that's, that's fine, fact, so not, what? It's not. Why is it not? Tell Be me why. Because if you have never reached it, then you you will, uh, um, utilization will be uh, of, it, it's yeah. not and, of the you know, yeah. So, okay. And, so, let's say one gigahertz is a current. Uh, sorry, let's sorry. say one gigahertz is a non boosted okay, frequency perhaps. and you can reach 1.5 for boosted. You can always set the max frequency of 1.5 and everything else will work correctly. When, when if you're running continuously at one gigahertz, we'll try to ask for 1.5, you might not yeah, get yeah, it. Yeah, that's fine as long as you have, as you don't have hybrid system. Maybe we can talk about that part, but even in hybrid, I'm guessing. Yeah. No, because then you, you can, there can be, so the difference for, you say you have two types of CPUs in the system and uh, for one of them, you reach like 80% of your max and on the other, you but, but reach 90%. In, in ARM, we have a solution for this, right? We not only have frequency yeah. invariant, we have also micro architecture yeah. invariants. And I think this is, can be just adapted by x86 yeah. to get That's rid of the hybrid CPU problem. Exactly. Maybe, I don't know. I think we run it for years now on, on yeah. arms. So uh, but, but it should be fine yeah. in big little. So yeah, okay. Well, well, we we can continue, I guess, talking about this topic. But we are running out of time, so I would suggest you know, uh, moving moving to email, okay. and you know, offline conversations right now, and then let let's go, let's move forward. Just yeah, one just quick point. Sorry, go on. Uh, all right. Just the thanking uh, Rui for bringing this up because it is a relevant problem and I was never really uh, uh, cool with that heuristic. So maybe we can make some progress. So thank you for uh, bringing this up to LPC, Rui. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah.
There's one, one, one quick point is that turbo frequency on ARM has also been done in previous chipset. It works perfectly, no issues with the current code. Except you need for to the set thermal. the turbo frequency as the max frequency and everything works. Except for the thermal. Thermal, no, no, even thermal works fine. Yeah, you get if you get throttled on thermal, you're going to utilization is going to be lower. So I will. And with frequency in well, Let's go. Like, let's anyway. go back to email. I will yeah, forward it. For sure, work conversations to you. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Let's let's move on to the next topic. Okay. Okay, this is the short one. So, uh, let me see. Next slide. Yeah. So, problem statement. This supposed device register is a, a, a widely used API. We use it to register supposed some devices in many, in many different drivers. And uh, when it's, it is first introduced, so we have four parameters. And we add some, and uh, add some, and then we remove some, and also add some. And whenever this happens, it's a pain. We need to update so many, uh, many colors of this a API. And if we check the parameters of the current Amazon device register, yeah, we can see that Many of them, these are just optional. These are just optional, uh, and these are configuration data. This, this doesn't ne not necessarily apply to every, every uh, small, small zone device. And uh, uh, plus, we already have a small zone parameter, uh, this structure, which already have some configuration data. So what I'm proposing here is that can we just, can we do a clean up once and move this this optional configuration uh, parameters into the some uh, to this Amazon Prime structure, and then we leave this API with fixed parameters. And for uh, uh, in the future, when we when we when we add new, uh, and new uh, uh, parameters, we just need to update the Amazon uh, uh, parameter structure. We don't need to update those APIs anymore. Yes, this is uh, this is for top is uh, just uh, uh, just uh, see if the this is uh, something that uh, we should do. And this is this is type of maintenance, right? Yes, I I, uh, I don't have any more slides. Just this question. I I just see. If this uh, can be moved to this one, and if yes, and which should be removed so that we can make a, uh, we can maybe we can make a clean up for it. Okay, so I guess the the problem statement here is that we have too many uh, arguments for thermal zone device register, and the at least is growing right uh, over time, yeah. or yeah. otherwise changing, which is uh, which is not convenient. Uh, because because all the users have to be updated every time, right? So, so that will yeah, be right. Uh, and and because of that, so I I think that one one way to address this would be to have a single pointer pass to thermal zone device register, and that pointer will point to a parameter structure where there is all all, all information needed and uh, and it, it can be extensible right so we could yeah. add more more pieces to it as needed without necessarily updating all of the users of it because uh which may not care about the new pieces <laughs> so yeah. the question daniel what do you think is 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 is, is yeah. this a good idea or is it not? Yes, I think it, it makes sense. It makes sense. That's 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 why there is more and more parameters. To right. Function. So yeah, yeah. I, I guess we 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 can we can start working on it, right? Yeah. Right. And then, what about uh, for this uh, for this one? So uh, better we have uh, the, uh, a list of the new. Uh, parameters uh, in the API. So, for example, the type and the DB data, and also this uh, 
which is the key pointer. This is something we must keep in your API. And what about this one? The operation callbacks. Can we leave it with the, uh, with, should we leave it with the new, uh, as one API, or can we move it into the uh, small zone parameter structure? Um, so, I, I I personally think that the there should be only one argument, and okay. and that the, the the structure pointed to by it should contain all of the information. Okay, just the one single parameter. Yeah. Okay, I got it. That makes sense. I think that overall many cases we are adding and then like uh, if we have several drivers need to update at the same time and uh, it's pain every time yeah and if you have a structure you can even maybe save the time of all this you know, seeding everything and you know use that structure in some in list as is assume that user has the uh, maybe put a requirement that user at the locate real memory and gave you I don't know. It depends because then you know it. It will need to be allocated, uh, and uh, um, and and the, the caller would need to stick to it after after uh, you know after after having registered the device. But yeah, it's why not? Yeah, I'm just. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not particular about it. But yeah. That, Right. <laughs> for for the systems where you want fast boot in the you know boot up because if you have like 30 sensors or 40 sensors they take time well yeah so especially if you have like a static definition right uh, anyway yeah. where all the stuff is already populated and... yeah um okay that's good okay yeah right that's so this was easy thank you uh, this was easy. Thanks for bringing this up, Rui, again. Uh, Giovanni, can you please, uh, 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 can you please change? Uh, yeah, okay, thank you. Right, so that would be, I think, all of the, uh, all about the second topic, right? Or is there anything else to add? This is all about the second topic. Oh, 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 all about it. All right. So now we need to switch over to the re real um, next topic that we have here, and that will be uh, wait for ten minutes. We can talk about the frequency variance during the time. Uh, I have a question just about this change. All right. Okay. Right. Right now, I'm doing a re rework of the three points. Uh, you might see that in that there is a, a big, huge patch set, yeah. 30, 30 patches. So that means that this will, will work. Uh, we do that before or after? I, I think it doesn't matter at this point because we will need to change. Well, so if we do, if we switch over to a single, you know, if we train, yeah, let's do a single ar argument, uh, you will not change not need to change the users of the api anymore right uh, at right. least the majority of them so maybe it's better to to make this change first and then do the trip points rework on top of it because it, it may be cleaner this way just no so for the majority of cases you will be changing you'll be making one change instead of two i think yeah, but I I will need to look at the you know at your patch set and see because uh, it all uh, depends on uh, what must work right like if, if if we can reduce the amount of work by doing things in a certain order then let's do that yeah okay that would be my approach all right so the frequency invariance uh, I. The, the the real problem there is that we use the aper for number of counters for computing the, uh, the the current frequency 
of uh, of a CPU on x86, or at least on Intel, and that uh, ratio can get can be greater than one. Now the expectation of the scheduler, or at least the path code, is that the, the 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 value is less than max, right? So, and that's that's that that is why we have to guess the real the the the, the max freak. Yeah, yes, there. This is the the, the reason. Because it may be made up. As I said, so you you have you have several different turbo bins. Like you 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 have a single core turbo. You have four core turbo. You have eight core turbo. You have like several flavors. Which one you choose? So we also we change dynamically the power total power of the highway. So I'm saying pick the absolute max frequency you could ever reach on any of the CPUs, assuming... Huh? May I speak? You can. One second, let me finish. So you can, but the problem is you're going to end up with a resolution of your real utilization being between 0 to 10 if you pick 100 gigahertz, right? So that what you're effectively doing by picking a max frequency is just setting what range of 102 for your values you're going to end up at. So it's okay if you reach the absolute turbo frequency only one second every day, but as long as that number is in like 100 gigahertz versus one gigahertz, you're not losing much by setting that as the max frequency. The, the, basically, all you're doing is losing a little bit of resolution by setting the max turbo frequency. That's all you're like losing. You're and, not really losing anything. And even if your task never reached one key utility average, which would mean always running at max turbo max, you can, you can, I mean, uh, how it's used in SkyDutil typically, if you have nine inch red, I mean that. say it may or may not. Yeah, but no, uh, I mean that the goal with the, the belt and the frequency invariance and the architecture invariance input is that you want a uniform classification of the compute capacity of the CPU. What is the max compute capacity you can achieve on your system without taking into account thermal, without taking into account some frequency um, slowing down and so on. That's the max you can reach. And everything is scaled by that, which means that wherever your task is, is utilization will be the same. Doesn't mean, uh, which means that if you are running at the max capacity of your E core, the utilization will be never above 500, for example, if you are doing some idle things. But that's work. that's okay, because 500 is the max compute capacity that your e-core can reach. Yeah. Uh, okay. okay, so now you, you basically are saying this as long as I have SMP. Uh, okay, wait a minute, no, let yeah, me finish. And, as long as we yeah. have SMP, we are fine. Uh, if we even if we have uh, we overestimated the max free, because in that case, um, uh, be, because in that case we we we, we may not reach a uh, hundred um, percent of utilization, but then every task will be relatively smaller. So yeah. we we don't care, right? But if we have a hybrid, but and then and th then there are different, you know, different turbo levels, and they, yeah. you know, in one case, they are reached more often than in the yeah, other but, case, but, then we have. A problem. But that's why we have this micro arch input, which will be different for your e core and your p core, because of, obviously your e core will never provide even at your book uh, frequency in, uh, the same amount of capacity than your p core um, so, so even at your max frequency so with uh, for your e core you will have your you are using the max frequency 100 of the compute capacity but the arch cpu scale will say this cpu at max is only half of the p core so that's mean 500 of the system I think that's what is missing for you for bit on, on your right. We've got an IPC difference. Even if we, even if they could reach the same frequency, yeah, uh, the that, P core is thirty percent faster. That's the purpose faster. of this R scale freq, R CPU freq, to say that you don't have the same microarchitecture. So even at the same frequency, you will not have the same IPC. 
That's exactly what you do in your test tool when you calibrate. And both of these are mainly to avoid clipping, right? Like if you set the whole point of the upper limit you're setting is just to make sure you don't uh, clip your position. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's, let's let Giovanni talk. Thank you. Um, I, I wanted to recall um, and, and say my uh, point of view of why this uh, uh, static value was choos chosen. I see that uh, in the audience there is uh, uh, somehow the belief that uh, we could just uh, set the maximum turbo level for the um, for uh, of the CPU as the max frac, and there wouldn't be much loss. So uh, I'm first. First, I'm happy to learn about this uh, micro art. Uh, 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 part where we could give different uh, frac max for the different kind of cores. So that's definitely the route to go for uh, for Alder Lake. But the presentation by Rui, I believe it's not based, I mean, it, it, it describes uh, Alder Lake as a possible challenge, but even on the current status, Rui is not happy. And um, the reason this was, uh, um, just a uh, constant and not the maximum turbo level is, as we all know, the um, uh, opportunistic Intel optimizations are so that uh, there is not enough uh, power to have all cores reach the maximum turbo, obviously. And uh, so if you set your max frequency uh, to the maximum turbo, you would uh, have uh, some cores that always appear severely underutilized uh, because that is uh, that value is used to compute the share of utilization and um, the turbo on 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 x86 uh, server uh, uh, cpus sometimes is double the maximum non turbo p state so it's a large margin and um, uh, I mean, you have Len Brown in the audience. Uh, the, there is, uh, the, the, there was no simple way to uh, understand what is the actual capacity at this time of the CPU. Some, someone here says just give it uh, maximum turbo, but uh, the, in my experiments, in my exper uh, exper uh, experiments, uh, we were severely underestimating the uh, capacity of some cores and uh, because the difference between max non-turbo and max turbo is very large and turbo is uh, not available for all cores. So this was the, um, the, the reason of that, of that constant, static constant, thank you. Um, there are a few points I want to kind of clarify to make sure we're on the same page. The architecture capacity is nothing to do with the max frequency each of the CPUs could reach. It's trying to say for a given exactly same frequency, what would be the performance difference between your performance versus your efficiency core? So at one gigahertz, if your efficiency core would be half as performant as your big performance core, then the value needs to be 512. And for the big core, you or your performance core to be 1024. That's what it's trying to do. It's completely independent of what frequencies each of the CPUs can reach. And um, the other part is you have, for a frequency range, it goes from zero to one zero two four. So you're effectively saying you have the resolution of 0.5 percentage. Like as long as you don't have thousand frequencies, you're not going to lose much because yeah, I think you get the point, right? We are saying from zero to one zero two four is the number of levels we can kind of accurately model, and as long as you don't have that many frequencies, I think you're okay. You, what you just what you're seeing is that the turbo can be twice the max at four cores. Is that the point? That can be that we can have that huge difference. In which case, I can understand from a load from a load balancer point of view. In order to define the CPU as overloaded, the utilization should be above. Uh, I think it's 75 or 85 percent of the max capacity. But now I agree that if your turbo is twice more than the usual max frequency, you will never reach or hardly reach this 85%. You will never be set as overloaded and you will never trigger the overloaded load balancing. 
So in your case, if there is such difference between the TurboMax and the Focor Max, I agree that the assumption that 80% of the utilization means overloaded is no more true for you because the, the overloaded case is much lower. That's probably one of your problems for the load balance of Sorry? We, we have five times no. all some cases. So your guaranteed versus uh, max can be up to five times. And also we can change, you know, guaranteed can change so fast that it's, it's, it, that, it, that's why Rui, what Rui is saying is, the, as you are saying that there can be huge difference in calculation. Okay. Yeah. I, I think we need information about what, you can, what you can actually achieve at a, at a given point in time. And that's where you mentioned thermal pressure earlier. So ideally, yeah. if you can't achieve your turbo frequency, but achieve something less, you need to know somehow that it's unachievable to get there. So you consider the CPU exactly. over your device yeah. already at a lower point. That the yeah. possible, yeah. Of course, if, if your max frequency is changing wildly all over the place all the time, it might be difficult yeah. to track. Uh, uh, so when, when actually, the, 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 so we, are, we, we have made a problem essentially, because the, the problem is that we need to guess a value uh, so that we can overcome the issue about uh, A-perf over Amper being, being greater than one in some cases. Because if we could, if that value could be greater than one, then we don't have, then we don't need the max. We just pass the value and be done. Yeah, but you still do not, do not know when your CPU is actually fully utilized or not. Is it fully utilized? Do you ha not have any spare cycles because your hardware can't go any faster? Uh, or I agree. Because it but hasn't increased yeah, 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 I you agree. You need that information. But yeah, okay. So we, we, uh, we run out of time for this uh, twice already. <laughs> okay, quick, so. quick comment. So <laughs> Linux does know when we are fully utilized because there's no idle time. We know when there's no idle time by definition. Yeah, that, that, that's a good criteria. We do yeah. know that. Or, so can we always assume that Intel hardware will run as fast as it can? It will never ever get to a situation where there is no idle time where it could actually run faster. Is it? Uh, well, Len, but no, no, no. This is a, well, but let let's just you know go offline with this because we can continue for the next hour here and uh, and we have other topics. So, what? What? Just that? one. One one minute comment. Okay. Just sorry. <laughs> so right. Last one. Minute. Last uh, one. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> if I if I give you an interrupt every th every like few hundred few hundred microseconds and update the thermal pressure, is that uh, how, what will be the impact of it? I know I, I can compute and I can send you that you you reduce every five hundred twenty fifty microseconds. Is that okay? <laughs> To have for scheduler, uh, so the, so you mean in in the interrupt context that even yes. not taken into yeah. account in your clock task, so it's not visible from a task point of view. Yeah, that's another uh, compute capacity scale. We have two compute capacity scale. Uh, what is stolen by interruption, and then what re in what remain? How you split that? Uh, between the task. Okay, I see. That's even more complex with the, we have another dimension with the IRQ. Otherwise yeah, that would have been. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's what the, we can, we know we have, we get IRQ on lots of cases when we limit something, but we don't yeah. take it because of a lot of other things, you know, too much. Yeah. Okay, sorry, sorry, Rafael. Yeah. No problem. All right, so we, Have a, we'll have a small, small break still. So the, to, to comment on, on the utilization uh, until we are waiting for the mic. So the frequency scaling is about making things 100% utilized all, all, all the time because it adjusts frequency so that it is, so that, that there is no idle time. So because, This is the whole point right now. So that we, we cannot really say that this is the, that, that we are um, 
we, we cannot use this as a criteria for uh, for saying that we are run as fast as possible. Okay. All right. So, yeah, Daniel. Okay.